One second. Turn this guy off. One, two, three, and go. Howdy, y'all. It's favorite trainer with a belt buckle bringing you live class today. Look at everyone showing up. We got the class, and we're going to be going over a program for a beginner, which there's Skelly over there. Say hi to him. Nice. We're going to go over what's the best program and why. So we have one program that I designed. We're gonna take a beginner who's a female and wants to lose fat, so we can stereotype. We want a big butt, flat tummy, toned, sexy, sleek arms, is what we're typically gonna say. So we're gonna do, for myself, we'll do a warm-up. I typically don't put the warm-ups on there. I think that you should get creative on how you do those. I highly, highly suggest that you never, ever do a warm-up like Nassim has you do it. I was breaking this down today and I almost started drinking, but it's too early, it's already nine o'clock. But uh, they're having you foam roll for 22 minutes with static stretching and a warm-up for the whole hour. So if you have a client that's paying you 100 plus dollars per hour, I don't think they're gonna be too excited about almost 50% of their time being spent to correcting stuff. So be creative with your warm-up, and we'll do some warm-ups today as we get into our plank challenge, but also our uh, um, PR slash challenges that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do a hip thrust, push-ups, and the side abductions. I'll do that in the second round, we'll add weight, and then we'll do a third round. Push-ups I like to keep the, between three and five. Most of, so you train my, primarily girls. How many of the girls that you train right now who are beginners can do a push-up? So we're doing the eccentrics. That's why we're keeping this three to five. You can do a wall push-up. You can do an uh, inverted push-up. You can do ones on your knees. I just, I personally don't like to because I find that it's just way better to do it the right way, which is eccentric. So side up at abductions, that's where I have my value. And on a bench, I'm gonna press down on the knee eccentrically to really get the glute med firing. So we have a hinge pattern, push pattern, and some accessory. Then we have banded plate squats. This is probably one of my favorite variations. I like to get a bench behind you, straight out, and we come down super, super slow. Now what this does, it's funny because someone was making a comment on Instagram and said they're doing it wrong because the dumbbell isn't on the sternum and at the lower portion. People love to be a Monday morning quarterback and pinpoint little things online. When you're straight out, you're putting a lot of force on your erector muscles. And so it keeps their body more upright versus a cue that is very common that trainers will use, which maybe is not even right, push your butt back. Because look what happens to my sternum when I do that. I'm losing my upright position. So especially when we're squatting, we want to keep our body upright, if, depending on the squat we're doing. But it's going to be, I have found, usually better for engaging the core when you keep the weight out. I'm not saying I'll never do a goblet. But for people who don't have a lot of strength, doing this right here, the limiting factor is going to be your biceps straight out. It's going to be your shoulders. But this, you can just go lighter, and it really fires up your low back in a good way. I'm going to do some Aussies, which is an inverted row, body weight, and then wall sits. Do that for three rounds. And then last one, we'll do step ups. Eight reps per side, military press run. We're gonna do it together. We're in beautiful San Diego, it's nice weather. I'll run down there, run back up, and then we'll come in. We'll do a little game. So we get our rotating T's. I love these for shoulders. We're doing this, and then when I say, we're not doing it for reps. Let me know when you get a burn. Got a burn, great, now do curls. Let me know when you get a burn. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, keep going. Uh, it burns, okay, great, back to rotating T's, go. And okay, put them down, let's repeat. Go back into the step ups, step up, step up, step up, run down, we make it a little fun little game. I personally don't like the complexes such as a step up curl press because this is far superior. If you wanted to load this up, I can do 40s here, but I can't curl 40s. Well, I can't, but most of your clients can. So they can't do the military press with 40s either. So why not load this up, put the weight down, then do an appropriate rate for your military press, put those down, and then do a bicep curl. Then you're optimizing tension for everything. So that would be my workout right there. Then we have Prince Hunk over here. We got Maximus, who's now in a ball because he just ate. So we're gonna do a back squat three by eight, cable row three by 12, hanging lying leg raise. Do that circuit for three, hip thrust three by 10 to 15, incline dumbbell press into a reverse fly, three rounds. 
Last but not least, reverse lunge, lateral raise, clams, and then some type of plank game. So he was talking about doing a plank down here. Magic word is pizza. Client has to hop up, run to the other side, get back into a plank position. And then you have a, a magic word, and that magic word is yellow. When you say yellow, they have to run over and grab a kettlebell and do super, super slow RDLs. Super slow eccentric, super slow concentric, just to get the pattern down. Lightweight, and then pizza puts it down, come back over here, hold the plank and just go back and forth, have a little game, make it fun. Especially when you have an area that's open like this. I would encourage you even more, especially if you're working in a corporate gym, Equinox Crunch Lifetime, to use your space and to be a little bit annoying because you are in an environment where it's dog eats dog. And if someone's watching me over there, I may not know it, but I want to do something fun and kind of loud over here so that I get their attention. So that's a little game that he's going to do. And then we have Queen Hunkett, we have Megan, and she's going through her, which by the way, she's the only one who did the fucking one minute challenge yesterday. What happened? Why didn't you do it? Uh, Excuse, good, uh-huh. I did it, just wasn't filmed, got 58. Oh, I love it, see, that's always the best one right there. I did it, were you supposed to do it with one arm or your eyes closed, because I did them both. And uh, again, I like it. <laughs> I did it with a 45. All right, that's what we're doing today. One minute challenge, pull-ups, push-ups, see what you can get. So then she did back, uh, squats to a bench, cable row three by eight to 10, dead bugs, three rounds of that, incline press into bridges into plank, three rounds of that, step downs. So instead of coming up, you're still gonna step up, but then we just focus on the eccentric coming down because that's where injuries typically take place. Curls for the girls and lateral raises. So out of these three, which one do you like the most or think is the best and why? That's what we're gonna talk about. Max is gonna say the middle one. I think that's a pretty good one. So while you're thinking, and I'll, I'll coach you through this, the reason we wanted to do this is for a couple, is to get you to think bigger and to be creative with your own training, but not a sheep. There isn't necessarily one that's better or worse. They all have a reasoning. So I can look at a program in paper, and I love doing it like with NASA or ISSA, to be technically proper, I would need to have that trainer in front of me to give me a reasoning behind that. But what I find with a lot of trainers today, it's like a bunch of fucking monkeys throwing shit at the wall, and then that's their masterpiece. There really isn't any reasoning behind it. Oh, I wanna do this cool exercise. Well, do your clients wanna have fun, cool exercises, or do your clients want results? I try to put it into a sports analogy. Who, did you play sports in high school or anything? What'd you play? Soccer. All right, so that's the one where you kick the ball, right? So how many people are on your team? Uh, total or on, the, on the field, sure. 11. Any real sports? I'm just starting. So you got 11 people. Now, is there like an offense? Uh, is like in basketball, we got like a three on two, two on one drill. What's your main offense we run? I don't know. Just, what is it? Okay, four, two, two. All right, so that makes sense. And if you want to get better at your four, two, two, one, Four, two, two. What do you need to do? Practice that. And you do it more. And you do it more. What happens? You get better at it. Is it perfect? We don't strive for perfection. You just keep on working at it. So it's the same thing with movement. If you look at my program versus Max, squat pattern, squat pattern, hinge pattern, hinge pattern, unilateral, unilateral. Is my unilateral better than his? No, this maybe is more appropriate for the client I'm working with because I did a lunge test with him, a screen. Can you go back and forth without having your trailing leg touch the ground for five? And my client failed. So they're, oh, oh, they can't even do that. So I don't think it's appropriate. But Max did, and his client's a stud, studette. And she was able to crush that, so he's gonna challenge the system appropriately. It's specific for that person. Well, most trainers, what we do today is, I'm gonna do lunges. Walking lunges for 7,000 extra reps. Why? That's what we gotta ask. And so if you wanna get better at sports, I love working with athletes, because you just keep on practicing, 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 and they get better at it. But for some reason in the personal training world, we think that this, is, this would be the worst fucking program in the world, by the way, if this was day one, and this was day three, and this was day five. Not the worst, but because of, we do have some repeats with like a hip thrust, 
wouldn't be absolutely terrible. But what we see is one program's completely different from the next one. Completely different from the next one. So here's our hinge pattern, which is the hip thrust. And then over here, you do a kettlebell swing, and you don't do any other type of hinge. And then over here, you do a, a floor bridge. So where is the practicing? As a coach, how do you expect your players to get better in the 4 4 4 2 2 one if you're not practicing it? And then the game comes up and you get fucking smoked and you're like, I don't know why. Yeah, because you're doing these stupid drills. If you want to get better, if you want a bigger ass, you got to go to the big picture. What is the action? What is this called? Extension. If you want a big ass, B-G-A-S-S. -S. What are those five muscles? Biceps femoris? G. Gluteus maximus, A, adductor magnus, which extends, and then you have anterior fibers that flex, and then the two S's. Nope. Semimembranosus, semitendinosus, the medial hamstrings. So those extend the leg back. Does it mean that we only do extension? No, we're going to do a back squat too, which is knee dominant. You're going to have quads, but you're also going to have your glutes. We're overloading. For eight reps, don't think of it as this is the beginner that we're loading up to 80%. Think of it as putting a weight that's challenging where maybe they have one or two reps in reserve. Because here's my eighth rep, you start getting a little bit of knee valgus. It's not the end of the world. You just stop it, rack the weight, keep it the same, drop it down a little bit, and focus on the proper mechanics. So those are all important things to review. Is Melissa supposed to come in today? Yeah. She just walked by. Um, and so it's important when it comes to programming is these Bs are great to have fun with. And that's what we're going to do with our, our programming. We're going to take the little plank game that we're going to go over. So find the exercises that you really enjoy. For me, I like the hip thrust. Degree of injury is super, super low. Worst case scenario, uh, 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 nothing. It's really hard to hurt yourself. Back squat. Uh, oh, shit, fell into the mirror. Almost had that happen with a client. That can be scary. So always weigh the pro and con. Could you, could you do a deadlift? Absolutely. Do you want to teach your clients a sumo? It's great. All for it. But I love the story that you told, Alexa. It's one of the benefits of going through the in-person. We're also online, World Wide Web. We're going to be in Austin the 26th, 27th, weekend seminars. This is where the meat and potatoes is. But first off, you've got to always do your pitches. Check out the book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. But the value of going through the internship is you get to train people as Alexa did. So it's going to be hard to hear, but why don't you tell everyone the struggle that you had with the two clients that you just trained? Um, so they came First in. wave and say hi. Hi. There you go. Hi. And she's a bartender at? Death by Tequila. Two by one deals on Thursday nights. I made that up, but. Uh, it's true. <laughs> I made the rules. There you go. So tell them about the story you just told me before class. So
I wasn't trying to be a creeper. I was just trying to get the mic over there so they could maybe hear. But that's, that's such a valuable experience right there because you're not going to fucking get that in a textbook. A textbook is going to tell you how do you regress when a client wants to bring in an extra client and you have your perfect little workout design and then you have a curveball thrown at you. But you're smart. You realize that, okay, I don't need to freak out. How do I make it challenging for her? But you learn from that experience, which is really neat because then you can say, okay, so maybe in the future when I have a beginner like that, I'm going to start out with bridges or for some individuals that are a little more overweight, she's perfectly politically correct, she's like, a little more, yeah. <laughs> you know, she had a little more excess adiposity would be the, the right way to say in front of a camera. Uh, but it's learning that environment for that person and then helping them give a good workout. Because imagine if you were to spend an hour teaching them the perfect hip thrust form. I knew a trainer in Bladium, Carlos, and not the Carlos we know online, it's a different Carlos, but he was my manager. And he was just a dick because he would spend a whole hour getting perfect squat form. And you can just tell his clients are like, great, I'm a professional at squatting, but this, for the first 30 minutes, we're just doing body weight squats. And it had to be perfect before you can progress. And like, are the clients really getting work out of it? Your clients are paying you a premium amount. Sure, we want to make sure they're safe. We want to be able to progressively overload, but it's tough as a new trainer and just a trainer in general because we can get lost in the minutia where we want to keep on trying to find cool stuff. I got to find new exercises because my clients want new. That's what the beauty of this system right here is you can put the new in every single time at the bottom. And it's cool when you train a client for a year and you do a lot of these same things. And it's just like, it's funny because it's like when you win championships in soccer, they don't reflect back, like, oh man, that was like, you know, I wish we had more entertaining practices. I just really wish that it would have been cooler. I'm like, fuck that, we got our trophy, this is what we want. So your clients can be like, oh, whoa, what? I, can, I can literally put something on my ass now and it stands there. And I couldn't do that before. Or we're be like, do you want to do more cool exercises next time? Fuck that, that's badass. I never had that before. Or I was never able to do a pull up. When you, when you have someone who comes in, they say they've been working with a trainer for seven years, and they come in, they start training with you in three months, and they can do seven pull-ups, whereas before they couldn't, that's powerful. Do you want us to keep on dancing around and doing fun, cool stuff, or do you want results? So it, eventually it comes back to the trainer and the confidence that we have, that you have someone in front of you, and you're going to have those anxieties, because you're going to hear people say like scary words like, you know, I'm in great shape. Absolutely not. Don't ever, when a client says they're in good shape, never believe them. Always pretend, like the movie uh, Waterboy, you guys seen that one? Coach is on the other side, and how does he get over the fear? Because the big bad bully, he just pretends like he's a baby, and he goes, boop, 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 and then he like, finally gets his brain back for coaching. So it's the same thing with my clients. All my clients, no offense, but they're, they're just, they're idiots and they're babies. <laughs> and so you just smile and say, I'm in great shape. Oh, nice, really? You're not, you're absolutely not in great shape. I can help you get in great shape. That fear, sometimes you're going to want to smoke your clients. But any one of these you could do and it'd be appropriate. Know how to regress and progress. So by knowing this, your life is a lot easier because when a client comes in, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about what I'm going to do today. And the more experience you get, I haven't written, that doesn't mean you're going to do this or you guys, I haven't wrote out a program in ages because the most important thing our clients can do is show up. It really is because we're general pop. It's different if you're working with athletes, soccer, football, basketball, whatever. There's a lot more advanced program that goes into it. But when a client comes in, first question I always ask them, what do you think it is? How do you feel? I know, my shoulder's a little jacked up. Imagine if I spent 20 minutes writing out this full body workout and their shoulder's a little jacked up. You're like, oh shit, you're, what do I do? What do I do? And you start getting sweaty palms. Like, okay, what's going on? Uh, so, you know, pole dancing again, you're like, Betsy, told you not to do it. I've had the craziest stories, it's funny, literally three gr girl students, and they're like, I pulled my groin over the weekend, I'm like, shots and the splits, how did you know? I'm like, I don't know what it is, but, oh, see, look at that laugh, she's tried it before, you know, what are you talking about, yeah, and that's who you want your relationship advice from, huh? Yeah, very good, nice, Danny Coco, here we go. So if they have a little, little kink or something, what's going on? You're good? All right, let's just do it with lower body today. Or if a client comes in and says, I'm feeling great. 
all right, so here's my program. We're gonna, they've been training for a couple months. We're gonna get a six rep max on the hip thrust. And just for shits and giggles, at the end, we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna see how many times we can do 225. Let's try to get it 20. You write that down, you got a personal record, you're constantly tracking it, that's progressive overload. What if a client comes in, and we have a client right now who's, uh, he likes to dabble in extracurriculars with uh, the devil's dandruff, and he's very uh, straight up with you. And he won't sleep for three or four days. And he'll come in and he just looks completely out of it. So you think like, dude, we're, gonna, we're hitting that one rep max today, bro. This is what we have on our program. We have to do it. No, it's like you can just kind of tell like, all right, let's, you showed up. That's great. You know, let's do a couple pull-ups over here. Let's do some bicep curls. Let's do a plank. Let's not kill them. You're going to have clients coming in hungover. You're going to have clients coming over, coming in who haven't slept very much. You're going to need to know when to push them and to take it back a little bit in a safe way. So these would be three great programs you can do for a beginner. We get a lot of people that ask us, I have a client coming in, she wants to lose fat, what's that program look like? Take one of these. You're gonna find that this one will probably be your most regressed. So someone who's more of a beginner. This would be someone who's more advanced. So I'm working with um, Tristan, who's a girl, and she is 30 pounds overweight. She used to be a soccer player, football player, whatever, soccer player, let's go soccer. And uh, she won the lotto and she took two years off of training. So she was in great shape and then she just went out there, enjoyed life, put on 30 pounds. You're gonna have a lot of clients right now, quarantine 20, I've, I'm not laughing at her, but the highest one I've gotten so far is the quarantine 55. I was like, 12, like, that's like fucking like seven pounds a month. I'm like, that's, I wanna see what we're, we're crushing there. That's like cookies and alcohol, like you have intent to gain weight. But it makes sense, and that's what we teach you in class, right? It's calories are going up, output's going down, stress, sleep, all that stuff. So you pick one of these, and then you implement it, and you see what you like, what was hard to teach, what was easy to teach. And then you start gathering your own little systems. I had a student reach out to me yesterday, said, Chris, I did, a, I did one of these on a beginning client. It went really fast. I said, okay, what could you do next time? What would you do if you had this written out for your client, and all of a sudden here, you're at 35 minutes in the workout. You give them a high five, like, yeah, get out of here. That's it. What could you do? That's a question. What do you think? Maybe add, like, some sort of, like, challenge at the end. Like, there you go. Or, like, running outside or something. There you go. You walk outside. Get some vitamin D, you walk down to the pier, you come back up here, how are we doing? Maybe you do a little plank challenge, you do a little challenge like that. What do you? I was gonna say walk, you usually walk. Get a little cardio in there. You can just add another one. Your fourth round. Good? I say add like a hill in there. Like if they do a walk, I'm like, okay, you're gonna walk for 20 minutes and try to find like two hills that you can go up. Like it doesn't have to be like this steep, but like try to find some sort of inclines and just all like flat. There you go. Add some intensity to it. So some that are a little more intense, less intent. You have a favorite exercise you want to end off on? Do it one more time. Go back to the squats, go back to the row, do a dead bug, do a press, do a bridge, do a plank, do a step down, do a curl, lateral raise, make one big ass circuit. Come up with your own little systems that work and the more you train. Pull ups. Hmm? 215 pull ups without the assistance. That's a lot. <laughs> That's it. So, uh, okay, so, yeah, you know, have fun with it, but make it appropriate for the individual. All right, so here's a little example of what the in-class looks like. We always start out with some type of program before. Now we're going to get into this a little a plank game. So, um. You can subscribe, follow us on Instagram. We got Show Up Fitness, Show Up Fitness Internship. If you want to become a great trainer, showupfitness.com. And most importantly, your favorite trainer with a belt buckle, check out my book, how to become a successful personal trainer. We will help you no matter where you are. All you got to do is show up. Woo!